the pleasure of introducing Johanna Johnson. Let me pull up your bio here. Uh, she is the community outreach lead at Thrive Central, Thrive Central Oregon. Thrive Oregon. Thrive Central Oregon. Okay. Um, jo Johanna, jo Johanna holds a degree in sociology and minor in psychology from Western Washington University, as well as a certificate in applied animal behavior from University of Washington. For the last six years, Johanna served the Central Oregon Companion Animal Population and is passionate about advocating for the human animal bond. From her time volunteering and serving people and their companion animals, Johanna learned the value of connecting individuals to resources and remo removing barriers. She enjoys being part of a collaborative community that shares visions of a more humane world for people and their pets. She is also excited to start a new journey with Thrive Central Oregon as a community outreach advocate and looks forward to helping build long lasting relationships. So, welcome to the front. Thank you for the introduction. Um, this is a lot more people than I expected, so bear with me. <laughs> um, can everyone hear me okay? Is this good? Okay, awesome. Um, hi, my name is Johanna. I work at Thrive Central Oregon. I realize some of you have been reading my bio. I have been working at Thrive for about two years now, so um, I've enjoyed this journey, um, being a part of this team, um, and I'm just really excited to share with you guys um, all the great work that we do for the community. Um, Awesome. So hopefully you guys can read that, but I can also I'll just kind of go in. So what does Thrive do? Um, we go out to the community and we help support and connect uh, individuals and families to the resources that they need and deserve in order to thrive. Um, so what does that look like? Uh, we do a lot of housing. I can kind of go more into that. Um, health. So, um, you know, making sure that people have access to health care, uh, making sure um, that, you know, they're able to um, get the care that they, again, they need and deserve. Um, employment. So we work with a lot of folks to connect them to different employment agencies, help build resumes, kind of go over, um, go over employment history just so we can kind of, you know, see what has been done and where we can help take them um, to obtain, um, obtain, obtain income or increase their income. Uh, Social Security, so a lot of the folks that we work with are um, either do not, um, are on no income or on a fixed income. So we work with a lot of folks to get connected to their benefits to make sure that they have access to that, have the support that they need, um, and kind of help them navigate that system. Um, and then basic needs, so um, I mean, but you can buy housing and basic needs, but um, uh, shelter, um, gas cards, um, clothing, showers, um, basically anything that anyone really wants to try to get connected to, we will do. Um, so how do we do that? Uh, Sarah, our executive director, uh, she started Thrive about seven years ago. Her, her vision was to get social workers in public, um, public spaces, um, so like libraries, to sit with people, um, have people sit down with us, have us be asked the question, what would you like to work on, what do you need today, and really let them lead that conversation and allow us to walk alongside them to, to meet their needs. Uh, so we are in we're, um, each county, uh, Deschutes, Crook, and Jefferson. We are at libraries, affordable housing complexes, um, uh, Deschutes County um, Behavioral Health Office in Lapine, um, and we have one-on-one -on -one appointments. So we'll set up for about three hours. People can walk in, they sign their name down. For half an hour, we work on whatever they would like to work on. Uh, we really try to hold our agendas outside. Um, so if someone comes in and they, um, maybe they've been living in their car, and they come in and they're, um, you know, needing a new pair of shoes, we might think, oh gosh, well I want to work on housing with you, but all they want to do is find a new pair of shoes, that's what we're going to do that day. So hopefully um, we can uh, establish a good relationship with them during that time. Uh, so they'll want to come back and we can kind of explore um, and build that relationship to, to make sure that they um, have whatever they need to, to thrive in our community. 
I'll circle back to housing. I think that's that's a hot topic right now. Um, a lot of people you, you might have some questions about what does housing look like in our community. Um, it's, it's very difficult. Um, again, we are working with a lot of folks that have no income or on a fixed income. So what does that look like? Um, I don't know if people are um, familiar with the point in time count, um, but that kind of just released that Central Oregon saw an increase of 28% of people experiencing homelessness in our community. Um, a lot of those folks have lived here, and a lot of those folks have been priced out of their housing. Um, so we um, work with a lot of people on going over um, barriers to them finding safe and secure and, per and permanent housing. Um, and that also looks like shelters, what kind of shelters, um, you know, how can we get, get them connected to just have a safe place to be that night. Um, so when we're working with people with housing, we're kind of really starting um, from the basics, trying to get to know them, asking some pretty tough questions, um, asking about past, present things that's going on in their lives. And I think it's really, really powerful the stories that people share with us the first time they meet with us. Um, we are open, people really open up and tell us some pretty um, intense stories of what they're, what they're going through, what they've been through, um, and we've never met this person before. Um, so I think that says a lot about the work that we do, the environment that we try to hold um, safe for everyone, um, and we help them navigate um, this crazy world we live in right now. <laughs> um, so what is the population that we look like, that we serve? Um, the average age is 56. Um, 55 identifies female, 45 identifies male, um, less than 1% are gender non-conforming. 30% of them who we see are families. So um, again, back to the pit count, that was one of the largest increases of, of individuals and families experiencing homelessness are families in our community. Um, 54 report um, uh, physical or mental health disability. 41 are living on a fixed income. 18% um, identify as Latinx. And 76 of those services we provide are um, directly connected to housing. So like I said, we do a lot of housing support. Um, we have about, oh gosh, 14 or 15 advocates. Um, and I think the average number um, of appointments that we take is 500 a month. So we are busy. <laughs> um, we have multiple walk-in sites. We take phone appointments. We answer emails. Um, our advocates are working super hard. And I feel very fortunate to be part of, the, of this team. We have a, we have a good crew. Um, so one, one, uh, 159 community members and their families um, were affordably housed in 2022. So um, we worked, that could be years of working with an individual or family. Um, that could be um, just the right time, the right scenario. scenario. Um, and we can get them housed in, you know, ideally a couple weeks, a couple months, but again, it's pretty tough right now. Um, we do have that flyer put out on this table, so if you guys would like to take that with you, read more, learn more, um, take that with you. I don't know if I missed that. Let me see. I talk really fast, and I'm sure Sarah wants this to be a lot longer, so maybe I'll pause and for any questions. <laughs> you take people to volunteer to be your social workers. How, how, do, how do you get the people to do the work? Yeah, great question. So um, all of our, our uh, advocates um, are employed by Thrive um, for specifically like volunteer opportunities. Um, we're always looking for support for our events. Um, and we also have a really cool volunteer opportunity to help people move into um, housing. So um, that can either be someone who is living outdoors and has secure housing to someone who um, is living in a place uh, and then needs help to move. So kind of going back to that statistic, um, a good 50% of the folks that we are working with are <coughs> on fixed income or have a physical disability <coughs> that um, doesn't allow them to lift um, heavy things. <coughs> Excuse me. So when they have the opportunity to move into a different type of housing, we rely on volunteers um, to kind of help that process. Um, 
Unfortunately, a lot of the folks that we we live with, with or we work with, um, they don't have a lot of friends and family. Um, so their social networks and their ability to um, have outside support um, is not as big as it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so, oftentimes, you know, you, they might be living in a less desirable place. They have an opportunity to move into an affordable housing complex. They don't have a way to move that stuff. So, um, if anyone wants to get involved, then we do have our sign-up sheet. But that is, I would say, a really impactful and important part of the volunteer community that we're trying to establish. I'll that answer your question. <laughs> I have another one. <laughs> so, do you work with the county? Do you work with the state? I mean, a lot of these people you're wanting to connect services to or what? Those two groups? Um, yeah, I, mean, I think it depends and on the services. So, um, uh, grant-wise, you know, we get a lot of um, funding from uh, state, and, state, and um, federal money to help t to do the work that we do, um, and then locally as well. Um, I think I, and if I'm not understanding your question correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I. Like in regards to like policies, we're not really involved in the policies, but I would say that out of like just on a plain and simple like advocacy, like we because we are opened up and we're allowed into people's lives, um, and we're sharing so much, we have such a, we have such a great opportunity to really see what's going on in our community um, and kind of help uh, help fight those stereotypes of you know why why this is happening or why this why that. Um, and so we really work with people to let them know that they have a voice. Um, they can, you know, they have rights. They have, um, they have tenant rights. They have rights to their their benefits. Um, so really, kind of, I think if we can advocate for them, then maybe they can help advocate for themselves. Um, so I don't know if that's necessarily on like a, a, a macro level, but. You know, hopefully that can create some change. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so just on a personal level, I had my mother-in-law was in her 70s, uh, basically out of state, lost her housing, and we had looked at, not through Thrive, but looked into trying to get her here in this area into housing, and this was only probably two or three months ago. And so she signed up for a couple of the the housing, and it was estimated at least a year and a half wait on all those locations. So I understand it's really hard to place people unless you just get lucky. Kind of thing is that kind of where you're looking at on like time wise for some people. And yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, housing is super <coughs> is tough. Um, a lot of what we do is housing related, um, and a lot of the conversations that um, we find ourselves having lately is um, we're limited to what ex exists, and what exists is not a lot right now. Um, so we we try really hard. We have a great relationship with our housing authority, so we um, try to stay um, on top of what what new, develop, do, new developments are um, opening, are the wait list opening, um, are there vouchers coming out, so um, like housing choice vouchers, um, are there other types of vouchers that um, are specific to certain affordable <coughs> complexes, um, and just getting people on the list as soon as, as soon as we can, as soon as we have that information. Um, and then unfortunately it is a lot of um, you're on the list and people want to know how long is that list and how long is that going to take and that's probably one of the hardest conversations that I know that I personally have is it's it's a waiting game it's a really unknown yeah factor. Um, and then maybe um, and I don't know if this is the case for you for your mom but you know if we're working with someone um, who has um, very limited income, maybe that conversation looks like, well, is there a way to increase your income by this much? Or what does that look like for you? How does that feel? 
um, because if we can get you maybe a couple hundred extra dollars a month through employment or something else, that kind of increases our options a little bit. Um, I think it's tough when people have like their they've set up in a community and like their kids are going to school there and uh, they don't want to move to Jefferson County or they don't want to move to Deschutes County. They want to stay, you know, maybe in um, Crook County, but you know we have to have those tough conversations of there's only so much limited here. Can we start to kind of expand our horizon? And um, some people say no, and we're like, that's okay. That's that's fine, and we'll work with what we can do. But it's not an easy answer. <laughs> yes, sir. You're not seeing any relief in Redmond on uh, options for rentals with some of the new complexes that have gone in. It hasn't opened up any options at all. So this kind of gets into like the the nitty gritty, and I can kind of nerd out on housing. So if I need to, if someone needs to like raise a hand and shut me down, it's totally okay. Um, so when it comes to like, so we generally talk about like three types of housing in our community, subsidized, affordable, and then market rate. Um, if we're focusing on a lot of like the affordable housing complexes that are being built, um, a lot of those times, those complexes are already filled by the time they are built um, because the wait list will open up um, probably maybe a year at least until the uh, complex is actually fully built out. Mm -hmm. So people are seeing all these buildings and it's awesome we're getting more and more and more but the, I think the need is just so high that we, we can't keep up um, especially when we're then um, reaching into market rate rentals. I think that's tough. Um, so and you guys are reaching into market rate rentals and subsidizing? Um, we personally are not. So, um, like, what do you mean by? Are you guys helping people get placed into market rate rentals if we and can. then subsidizing their uh, their rent there? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be dependent if they have a good voucher or if there's other programs that exist to do so. So, um, Housing Choice vouchers are the vouchers that um, Housing Works, our local um, housing authority, there's a wait list that opens up for one week um, once a year. And that list gets filled probably with two to 3,000 people on that list, and then it's a lottery-based system. Um, so that's what subsidizes market rate rentals. Okay. Um, some programs, like sometimes Neighbor Impact or something, will, they'll have kind of those more longitudinal like, um, support, whether it's like medium or long-term um, rental support. So long-term is like a voucher. Medium um, rental support would be um, like rapid rehousing and stuff like that. Um, so we can, we do work, I mean, it's dependent on someone's income. Um, also, like the income requirements, like with the income to rent ratio, that, that can be really tough. So some places are like, you need to have three and a half times the amount of income for rent, and that's, that's hard. <laughs> if that answered your question. Mm -hmm. yes. so kind of a follow-up to that, it sounds like you don't. You don't get subsidies to rent, but it says on your handout you've given over a million for rent and deposit assistance. Where do you give that million? Yeah, so there might be so a sub so um, subsidized. If that's the, um, subsidized housing is when someone um, pays thirty percent of their total income in rent. Um, so subsidized housing is a specific tax bracket to housing development. Um, yeah. that are managed by certain property management companies in Central Oregon. The Housing Choice Voucher also subsidizes someone's rent. We, during the pandemic, um, had a lot of money as well as a lot of other organizations to help pay rent. Um, so that would be if someone like you know lost their job or um, unable to work due to COVID or other things, we did have rent support to help families stay housed in that. Capacity. But now that the pandemic's over, you don't. Money is, it's hard. It's okay. it's drying up That's out fine. there. Yeah. Okay. But you're <laughs> yeah. saying you still pay deposits and rents for people on occasion with what you have, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yep. So um, deposit assistance, and that's based that's based on the funding and that we have available, and we're always trying to um, access more of that so we can support people um, in that transition for deposits and in rent support. That's one of the hardest parts for anybody in a transition is coming up with a deposit and the first and last they can handle the the rents a lot of times, but it's that part's of, yeah, for sure it's a lot of money up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Yes. Um, I don't remember 
remember the name of the organization, but over the last year I've heard some like radio advertisement for like, I don't remember if it's like room sharing or house sharing um, yeah. organization locally. I think it's out of Bend area, just trying to people who have extra rooms in their mm -hmm. houses to allow them to be rented through uh, yeah. some organization that don't. I think I heard that. Is that a commercial that's on the radio yeah. recently? Yeah, like neighbor, neighbor share or something like that. Yeah, I think it's a great something. idea. Something. I just, yeah. I haven't checked into it. So yeah. Obviously. I think it's a great idea. I mean, a lot of folks, you know, if they, maybe there's someone who lives alone, they have, you know, three extra bedrooms and they want to rent that out. I mean, heck, why not? I mean, but uh, if we can connect folks to that, um, then people will do that, then we certainly will work towards getting them into a room to rent situation. It just made it sound like there was obviously a no good thing specific requirements. They don't just sign anyone up. For sure, yeah. It, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Navigating all of those barriers that a lot of the folks have, you know, whether it's uh, no rental history, minimal rental history, um, criminal history, um, lack of credit, poor credit, um, you know, a lot of our community members, you know, are navigating that, so we just help them navigate all of those. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, gift for you. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all again. Uh, we will plan on seeing you here same time, same location, same station next week.